I chose to examine the effectiveness of different methods of dialogic reading instruction. The district I work in faces the same challenges found nearly everywhere these days. However, I believe the concentration of these issues faced by the community where I teach is higher. All of our students receive free or reduced lunch, and we have school-wide Title I programming. During college, I was a substitute and student teacher in this district. After graduation and working three years out of state, I knew this district was the place I wanted to return to. I have colleagues who have only taught in this district for their entire career, some as many as 30 years. Having grown up in the community neighboring the one where I now teach, I've grown tired of hearing the community or parents blamed for the lack of student achievement, which eventually resulted in the district being listed as a priority school. I don't find it fair to look for excuses or to place blame without trying to do something to make a change, without trying to do something about it. Being located on a reservation, my district serves primarily Native American students and families. The high school graduation rate of Native American students nationally was about 79% in 2015 and 67% in Michigan in 2016. As this chart indicates, Michigan's dropout rate of Native American students is more than twice that of their white peers. The graduation rates listed here are opposed to the rates of white students, which are approximately 92% nationally and 83% in the state of Michigan. These statistics correspond with Native Americans in Michigan having the highest dropout rate of all ethnic groups. What I did find interesting, though, was that Native Americans had the highest rate of alternative program completion. Another way in which my district is unique is that our K-12 school building also houses Head Start and FACE programs. FACE is a Bureau of Indian Education program that stands for Family and Child Education. I see this unique quality as a great strength. It means that the majority of the students who enter our K-12 programming each fall were already housed in our building for four or five years prior to that. Additionally, housing the FACE program also means that many of our students' parents were in our building leading up to their child entering readiness or kindergarten. A strong belief within the Native American culture and part of the foundation of the FACE philosophy is that parents are a child's first teachers. When I expressed interest in supporting the FACE and Head Start teachers as a literacy leader within our building, I was met with great staff enthusiasm, even parent interest. Having been so well received, I wanted to know what could have great positive impact on a child's literacy skills. This led me to dialogic reading. As my earlier statistics demonstrated, the education level of many of the parents in my district is lower than that in neighboring communities due to the demographic makeup. Over the last three years of assisting with the language portion of my district's kindergarten screening, I have found firsthand that usually half the students who are screened cannot even sing the ABCs, let alone enter school being prepared to learn to read. What inspired me most greatly was research done in 2013 regarding the effects of a dialogic reading intervention done with children prenatally exposed to cocaine. As addiction is becoming an increasing issue in the community where I teach, I wanted to find proof that even children facing such an obstacle in life could reap the benefits of such an intervention. Even more inspiring was that the dialogic reading only had to take place in 10 minute increments, three times a day. When I told parents there were 144 10-minute periods in one day, they found it very doable to think of using just three of those with their children to significantly, positively impact their language skills. Several different methods of instructional delivery were investigated in the reviewed research that occurred between 2005 and 2016. Although some of the dialogic reading research referenced within 
within most of these recent articles, dated back as far as 1988. Methods of instructional delivery for parents included self-instruction via commercially available training videotapes, online video instruction, face-to-face -face small group video instruction, a face-to-face -face workshop format, instruction with and without phone call follow-up, and even the acceptability of teaching parents through videotaped instruction left playing in the waiting rooms of community health centers. There were commonalities across the research I studied. Parents saw in-person trainings, as opposed to those offered strictly online, as opportunities for social contact. Not just preference, but also advantage of in-person instruction was evident all around and somewhat higher among parents with high school education. Piggybacking off this research, in order for caregivers to use strategies learned through videotaped instruction with integrity, supplemental training may be necessary to teach certain strategies. The research encompassed many ethnicities, education levels, and levels of socioeconomic status, all with encouraging results. No methods of delivery of parental instruction were found to be ineffective. Keeping in mind that these statements are true for parents who are already reading to children at home, voluntarily participating, are important frames of reference. A commonality throughout the selected research was that the majority of participants were white, lacking diversity, and had reported already reading regularly with their children at home. Participants in these studies were all voluntary and therefore interested in improving their reading techniques. I would be interested in further research based on parents receiving this instruction through enrollment in mandatory parenting classes rather than those voluntarily seeking this instruction. Research could also focus on minority groups rather than a white majority. Such research would need to be done with large numbers of participants, participants as to not create additional limitations. Being that many families I work with are multi-generational households, additional research of families with this dynamic would also be interesting. Specifically looking at households where a male is the primary caregiver would also address another stereotype and limitation in previous research that would pertain to some of the parents in the community where I teach. <laughs>